Hey, what's up, YouTube, and welcome to yet another episode of our Jailbreak Update series. Now, I'm making today's video for a couple of reasons. One, within the past few days, there have been some major releases within the jailbreaking community. Most notably, Ian Beer from Google's own Project Zero has stayed true to his word and just released a kernel level exploit for iOS 11.1.2. This means that we could very easily be seeing an iOS 11 jailbreak utility being released in the near future. Also, Saiguza, who is known for making the Phoenix jailbreak for iOS 9.3.5, has also released yet another exploit for iOS 10.3.3 and earlier. And lastly, I thought it was worth mentioning the developer Abraham Mastery, who is responsible for the Saigon jailbreak for iOS 10.2.1, has also released what people are calling a semi-jailbreak for iOS 10.3.2 called Houdini. And as a recent update, just this morning, roughly around 10 a.m. on December 13th, Apple seeded iOS 11.2.1 to the public. Now, I personally am going to skip this update as it only fixes a remote HomeKit sharing issue. Apple previously disabled this feature because of a security vulnerability, but with this latest update, it looks like Apple has fixed that issue and has re-enabled this feature. So as you guys can see, there are some major releases within the jailbreaking community that have happened since I made my last jailbreak update, and I want to keep you guys as informed as possible, and so that is the major reason why I'm making today's video. But as a second reason, after my last jailbreak update, I got a bunch of questions regarding what firmware you guys should be on, whether you should update to iOS 11.1.2 or stay where you are at, depending on which firmware you are on. And since there really isn't a one size fits all answer to this question, I figured I would make today's video kind of explaining which exploits are out there for which firmwares. So hopefully by the end of this video, you can answer that for yourselves if you want to upgrade or downgrade or stay exactly where you are at in anticipation for a new jailbreak utility. So first off in this video, we're going to talk about some of the major releases that have come out within the last week. If you guys missed my last jailbreak update video, the entire video is pretty much about Ian Beer's new exploit for iOS 11.1.2, which in fact he just released early yesterday morning on December 11th. Now essentially his exploit is a kernel level exploit for iOS 11.1.2 allowing developers to run unsigned and unofficial code at the kernel level. This is basically the highest level of privilege possible, meaning in the right hands and with the right exploits. This could be a significant part of putting a jailbreak together for iOS 11. Anyway, if you guys don't remember who Ian Beer is, he is from Project Zero and he is the developer that released the Mac Portal exploit for the iOS 10.1.1 jailbreak that we saw last year and this year we are in roughly the same situation. So what did he release? So taking a look at Ian Beer's Twitter account, this is what he tweeted out to his followers. The first tweet says, iOS 11.1.2, now with more kernel debugging. And then following that, he has a link to Project Zero's site with his full write-up on the exploit. So taking a look at Ian Beer's write-up, you can see it has a bunch of useful information, what devices he tested it on when he first discovered the bug, and it even comes with a project file for security researchers to go ahead and download and figure out themselves how the bug works. You can see that it gets TPFO on all 64-bit devices, plus he even included a proof of concept local kernel debugger, which can prove that this actually does work, and he included a project with that debugger also. Now, if I go to Apple's site, you can see that under IO Surface that this bug has been reported and has been fixed. You can see this bug affects the iPhone 5S and later iPad Air and iPod Touch 6th generation. And most importantly, you can see that it does have the ability to execute code with kernel privileges. And lastly, you can see that it was reported by Ian Beer of Google's Project Zero. Now, in a second tweet that Ian Beer shared with his followers, he said TPFO should work for all devices. And as we learned from his write-up, that's for 64-bit devices. And that the proof of concept local kernel debugger is only for those that he has tested on. And in his write-up, he explained that he only had an iPhone 7, 6S, and iPod Touch 6G laying around, but adding more support should be easy, most likely by just finding the offsets for other devices. 
Anyway, that's the quick summary of Ian Beer's new kernel level exploit for iOS 11.1.2. Like I said guys, this is a critical piece of the puzzle when putting together a new jailbreak for iOS 11, so hopefully within the next couple of months we can see a new utility released for iOS 11.1.2 and below. I will get into this in more detail later in this video, but essentially if you are not on iOS 11.1.2 and you are currently running any version of iOS 11, I would suggest to either up upgrade or downgrade to that firmware, especially if you are on iOS 11.2 as this exploit has been patched in the latest firmware. I just released a downgrade video on how to downgrade from iOS 11.2 to 11.1.2 just recently, so if you guys need help doing that process, go ahead and check out that video. And I'm really trying not to be too repetitive, but the signing window for 11.1.2 will be ending soon as 11.2.1 came out today and 11.2 has been out for roughly a week or so. So if you guys are planning to upgrade or downgrade to 11.1.2, I would do so immediately. Like I said, I'll get into this a little bit later in this video on if you're on iOS 9 or iOS 10 or any other firmware besides iOS 11, as I've had just a ton of questions about this topic. Lastly, before I get into that though, I just wanted to finish up talking about some of the latest news that we've received in the jailbreaking community. Alright, so like I briefly touched upon in the intro of this video, Ian Beer's new exploit isn't the only thing that has been released in the jailbreaking community in the past week. The iOS developer named Seguza, who is also famous for creating the Phoenix Semi-Untethered Jailbreak for 32-bit devices running iOS 9.3.5, has also released a new iOS 10.3.3 exploit called Vortex. Now I won't get into too many details surrounding Vortex, but essentially all you guys need to know is that this new exploit specifically targets the same vulnerability in IO Surface that Ian Beer's exploit does as well. So essentially we have the same situation with iOS 10.3.3 and earlier as well we could be receiving a new jailbreak for that firmware. So if you guys are holding out on iOS 10.3.3 or 10.3.2 or 10.3.1 or any firmware of iOS 10 that has not been jailbroken, you guys are in a really tough spot. You could either hold out and wait for an iOS 10 jailbreak or upgrade to iOS 11.1.2 as I've discussed earlier in this video and hold out for an iOS 11 jailbreak. But along the lines of a new jailbreak utility being released, we actually saw an update for the Saigon jailbreak for iOS 10.2.1. Developer Abraham Massery released Beta 3, which specifically uses this new vulnerability called Vortex to create a more stable iOS 10.2.1 jailbreak. Users have been reporting that it takes a substantially less amount of attempts to successfully jailbreak using the third beta of Saigon. So it's great to see that developers within the jailbreaking community are already taking advantage of the these new exploits that were just released this week. Now lastly, pertaining to new jailbreaking news, a new semi-jailbreak tweaking tool was released by the same developer Abraham Massery for iOS 10 to 10.3.2. Now users on the internet are calling this a semi-jailbreak, but really this isn't a semi-jailbreak at all. It has nothing to do with being tethered or untethered, and it doesn't install Cydia. So really it's not a jailbreak, it's more of like I said, a tweaking tool. So essentially Houdini just allows you to do a few things. It's not an entire jailbreak, but it does allow you to apply themes, it allows you to change the screen resolution, and it also allows you to hide or rename icon labels. So even though it's not a full entire jailbreak which allows you to install packages from Cydia, it is a nice in-between jailbreak if you are stuck on iOS 10.3.1 or 10.3.2. This at least allows you to modify and customize your device a little bit in ways that used to require a full jailbreak. So big shout out to this developer, awesome work on the Saigon jailbreak and awesome work on this tool Houdini for iOS 10.3.2 and below. So with all this new jailbreak information released within the past week, a lot of people are going to ask what firmware should I stay on or what firmware should I upgrade to? I know when I released my last jailbreak update, that was the number one question asked. So for the next part of this video, I'm going to do my best at explaining what exploits are out there for which firmwares. So hopefully you guys can decide on your own which firmware you want to stay on or which firmware you want to upgrade to. I'm going to do my best at answering that question, but honestly, in the end, it is up to you guys if you want to update or stay where you are at. 
And honestly, before I get too far in this part of the video, I just want to say there really is no one size fits all answer to this question. And I guess what was really surprising to me in this last week is that Surik himself, you know, the creator of Cydia, was replying to a thread on Reddit. And within his comment, he was talking about why Cydia is the way it is. But at one point, he was discussing the active users of Cydia and specifically addressed what firmwares they were running. And I guess what was surprising to me is that 19% of Cydia users, people that have jailbroken devices, devices are still on iOS 7. He noted that 30% are on iOS 8, 28% on iOS 9, and only 15% on iOS 10. And I guess that fact surprised me because I was previously under the impression that people that were still jailbroken were either on iOS 9 or 10. I didn't realize we had such a huge demographic that were still on iOS 7 and 8. Anyway, taking that into account, I will try to frame my response and include those users running iOS 7 and 8. Alright, so starting with the latest firmware released by Apple being iOS 11.2. If you guys are still currently running that firmware and are looking to jailbreak in the near future on iOS 11, I would highly suggest to just go ahead and downgrade to 11.1.2 as Ian Beer's new kernel level exploit is patched within 11.2, so being on that firmware will not gain you any ground there. Anyway, if you guys are on iOS 11 to 11.1.1, this new exploit in theory should work on those firmwares as well, and I know in most cases you want to stay on the lowest firmware possible to have the best chances to jailbreak, but in this one case, we know the exploit is going to work for iOS 11.1.2, so in my opinion, I would just go ahead and upgrade to 11.1.2 so you are on the latest possible firmware, having the most features of iOS 11, but you would still be on a firmware that Ian Beer's new exploit can be performed on. So in short, if you're on 11.2, downgrade, and if you're on any version of iOS 11 that's not 11.1.2, go ahead and upgrade to that. Again, like I said, before I get too far, this is is just my opinion. It's up to you if you want to upgrade or downgrade or stay exactly where you are at. All right, so moving on to iOS 10. Now we know that if you're on iOS 10.1.1 and you have an iPhone 7, you can jailbreak. And you can also jailbreak if you're on iOS 10.2 for all the other 64-bit devices. So essentially, if you're jailbroken on one of those firmwares, I would just stay where you are at and save your SHSH2 blobs for iOS 11.1.2. So hopefully in the future, you can use the Prometheus tool downloaded in Cydia to restore to iOS 11.1.2, even if it's no longer being signed. Now, just as a fair warning, Warning, users are reporting that Future Store may not work for 11.1.2 as 11.2 now uses a different SEP protocol, meaning once Apple is no longer signing iOS 11.1.2 and you go ahead and try to use the Prometheus tool to update your device to 11.1.2, it may not actually work and or some features of your device like Touch ID and Face ID may be broken. And again, just to clarify, using these blobs requires a jailbroken device, so if you're not jailbroken broken, that information really does not apply to you at all. Still, I don't know if upgrading to 11.1.2 right now is a good idea if you're jailbroken because you will obviously lose your jailbreak. And just because these exploits have been released doesn't necessarily mean we are actually ever going to receive a jailbreak utility tool, although it makes the chances much more likely that that's going to happen. Essentially, the same thing goes with iOS 10.2.1. You have the Saigon Beta 3 now, which uses the Vortex exploit, so you can jailbreak, but again, I'm not really sure if it's worth it to upgrade yet, but at the same time, if you don't upgrade before Apple closes its signing window on 11.1.2, you may never actually be able to upgrade to that firmware, even if you save your blobs. Also, another key point to keep in mind is if you decide to upgrade, there really is no way to downgrade back to any version of iOS 10, so essentially you are stuck on iOS 11. Now, if you are running iOS 10.3 to iOS 10.3.3, there are quite a few exploits out there available for you. There's the Ziva exploit for 10.3.1, which no one's really taken any use of yet. There's the 10.3.2 triple fetch exploit by Ian Beer, which again, no developers really used yet. And like I discussed earlier in this video, for 10.3.2 and below, there's now the Houdini tweak tool that just was released by Abraham mastery which allows you to tweak some things on your device without actually having a jailbreak for it and lastly if you're on 10.3.3 the latest update again for you guys is that Seguza just released the vortex exploit which essentially is the same thing as Ian Beer's new exploit for iOS 11.1.2 meaning for users on 10.3.3 and below there could be a new utility coming for iOS 10 
So I hope so far some of this information has been useful and kind of illustrates my point that there really is no one solution for everyone out there. I don't really know if you should upgrade to iOS 11 and lose your jailbreak or if you're on 10.3.3 and don't have a jailbreak, what to do in that situation either. I hope just by laying out some of the facts and what exploits are available on what firmwares helps you guys decide and at least informs you a little bit more of what's out there for you guys and what potentially could be coming so this can help you make the decision if you want to upgrade or not on your own. Anyway, along the same lines, for anyone out there on iOS 9 or earlier, really the decision is up to you. If you are currently jailbroken, I would honestly just stay where you are at until we receive new information that a jailbreak might be coming for iOS 11. Again, as a precaution, just save your blobs for iOS 11.1.2, so hopefully you could upgrade to that after the signing window closes, but honestly, I'm not 100% sure in this case if that's going to work. I personally haven't had too much success in the past with using blobs, but I did save mine for my iPhone 6 running 10.2 currently, so if we do get a jailbreak for iOS 11 in the future, I will try to use blobs to upgrade that device after the signing window closes for that firmware. Anyway, IPSW.me has it laid out pretty nicely on which firmwares can currently be jailbroken. If you do not fall into one of these, unfortunately, your device cannot be jailbroken until a new utility comes out. Anyway, the second new utility comes out, I will be issuing a tutorial video ASAP so you guys can get informed and jailbreak your devices for yourselves. I hope the last part of this video helps you guys decide if you want to upgrade to iOS 11.1.2 or not. Honestly, if you're on any version of iOS 11, I would just upgrade to 11.1.2 as you'll be on the most updated firmware that can take advantage of Ian Beer's new exploit. Anyway, if you guys are not interested in jailbreaking, go ahead and update to 11.2, but if you are, definitely stay on 11.1.2 or below. Anyway, for everyone out there that's on iOS 10 or below, you guys have the really tough decision on whether or not you want to upgrade now in anticipation of a new iOS 11 jailbreak or stay where you are at. Again, like I've talked about previously in this video, if you are currently jailbroken, I would honestly just stay where you are at and utilize your current jailbreak, but if you are not jailbroken, it's up to you to decide if you want to upgrade update or not. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching today's jailbreak update video. I'm absolutely stoked that we might be getting a new iOS 11 jailbreak utility here in the near future. Also, awesome work to all the developers finding exploits and creating utilities and even tweak tools for iOS 10. That firmware has seen some major updates within the past couple of weeks, so big shout out to all the work that's currently going on in the jailbreaking community. In the end, thank you guys so much for watching today's video. Let me know down in the comments section what you guys guys think of today's video and all the awesome news and releases that have come out within the past week within the jailbreaking community. Also let me know down in the comment section what firmware you are going to stay on or upgrade to and why. And lastly before you head out don't forget to follow me on my social media pages and of course subscribe to my channel to be updated on when I release new videos just like this one. Again thank you so much for watching and until next time this is Tony signing out.